All right, welcome back to Wrench Life. Now, I like to have at least two projects on the go at any given time. The Super B you've already seen, and we'll be giving you an update on that in the coming weeks. But for now, we're going to talk about this yoke here. And this is what has become of our two week build lawnmower racer project. So, over the last couple of months, we've been taking this thing, testing it, we're taking it to race meetings, practice meetings, all that kind of stuff, and uh, really getting a feel for just how well it's turned out and what left there is to, to tweak with it. All right, so that's how we uh, look through and I'll show you a lot of the little things we've changed and kind of fixed up since the last time we've seen it um, in the middle of summer last year. Right, well there we have, there's the front of it, and this is kind of probably the best place to start because this is not the standard front end, this is certainly not the front end that we left you with the last time you've seen it. Um, we took it out to a race at the end of last year, just to kind of give it a shake down, see what we kind of needed to do over the winter months. And we came back with um, a pretty busted up nose cone, I guess a kind of tempted fit with the whole Rubbins Racing number 46 Days of Thunder car livery on it, but yeah, we ended up needing to make a whole new front nose cone so um, we took the original one made a mold from it and this one's now that's fiberglass it's a lot shorter the old one did come out about there and um, so that's kind of why it was getting smacked off things also what we have here on the front is a little nudge bar right there a little tubular steel deal just to kind of stop that nose cone uh, from getting smashed in any further also at the side there you can see that's where the new the new exhaust comes through, but we'll get to that in a wee minute. Now one thing about the bonnet, um, before we go on to the next bit, you can see the holes here, there and there. With the, with the stock uh, kind of wide body bonnet, the front mount point for the bonnet is on the, the plastic nose cone. So that was kind of, that was one of the problems that actually uh, started the braking process. It's made the whole thing kind of disintegrate. So now what we've done is we've got that light front end nose cone it's riveted onto the metal piece at the back and the metal piece is what connects onto the tractor so for this front point here we now have these little these little spuds on the little grow outs there and then one at the back obviously as well that you've seen in the previous videos and um, that's the original hole we put one down there just to give it a little bit of a bonnet lift so we have a bit of a vent at the back here to let heat kind of escape whenever the thing stop more than anything okay so with the bonnet off uh, now you can see what we've done with the, the new look exhaust so before it was kind of coming just out and straight out out the side uh, pea shooter with no kind of muffler on it this one here we're running it right around the front and we have this kind of motorbike style exhaust can on the front. It's similar construction to the little bastard. It's actually made out of spares that we had for the little bastard and it just comes up there and exits. We found with the little bastard once you put a muffler on it it actually helped a bit with the torque. Now we don't know yet whether or not that's true with this one um, because we changed really so much of it that we don't really know what's helping but uh, it is quicker so we'll find out in a while whether or not the uh, kind of increase in speed is down to this here or if it's down to what we've done underneath the tractor it's open all right, now one of the other things that we've done is we've kind of added to uh, the tires that we have in the arsenal. So usually what we run is these boys here. It's quite a kind of dry weather, fairly generic uh, kind of turf tire. What we also have here now is these bad boys. So these are still a turf tire, they're totally legit, but they are um, they're one of the more aggressive turf tires you can actually buy. And we put them to good use at the weekend there. If you're wondering where that camera was mounted, we actually have right in here, 
a little mount just sits through there but these things uh, especially in the wet it's very hard to get a camera position that doesn't get covered in that uh, so this is one of the the very few kind of sacred areas of this tractor that doesn't get stinking so we put it there and it actually worked out pretty well for anyone uh, building one of these things you'll probably find that after you lower it there's no space for the battery usually the battery goes underneath the seat and once you kind of lower it down there's no space for the battery anymore in this one the battery ended up uh, underneath the steering column and it actually is pretty hard to get to so what we have here is two charge points so positive uh, and negative and we can just kind of connect um, you can connect your charger leads onto it. The other thing with it as well is, if the battery goes flat when you're out in a race, you can put jump leads onto there, get it started, and get the jump leads out of the way quickly, and get to the start line. Under this seat so we've had a couple of incidents where I maybe fell off this so yeah I didn't really want to fall off it anymore we've been just getting it quicker and quicker and quicker and making it so they can turn harder and grip more and really my arse is the bit that's kind of letting this whole thing down because it was just gonna fall out so we've got this frame that kind of bolts around it's the existing seat we've got this frame that bolts around it um, kind of holds us in from the side and also this back bar here acts as a kind of um, like a rear impact protector because you know if somebody crashes into the back of you looking at this more in particular the seat is kind of one of the more rearward uh, components so if somebody crashes into the back of you they're probably just going to crash right into your own back so uh, now we get that little frame in place there's less chance of kind of getting all uh, broken up All right, so we don't usually show just so much of what's going on underneath these things because it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like Formula One, but uh, I'm gonna show you a couple of the key points underneath this, things that we've changed, and also kind of what makes a good transmission and kind of how I get away with this. Let's right, have a look. All right, at the front here we have uh, it's now a 190, uh, and it's cast iron pulley. We did have a big aluminium one. It was quite grabby but it was also geared a little bit too high. So kind of the combination of those things. We switched the cast iron. It seems a lot more drivable. And um, we've also changed these two guides. So we run these two guides here and they kind of stop the they stop the belt from coming off. And really the thing is really reliable. We're running a B section belt. So it's a bit bigger than the A which is the, the standard for, for a mower like this here. And uh, Basically, it just goes all day. I mean, we put this belt on about a year ago, a B-section belt. It'll last for ages. If you look after it well, you set it up properly, you can't go wrong. We've uh, we've messed around with the steering a wee bit. So that's the steering system. It runs down to there, so that's the bottom of the steering shaft. And uh, we've actually slowed it down, so now kind of it's not just as twitchy as it was because it was pretty fucking ridiculous <laughs> you can also see there at the front uh, where we put the mount for that can to stop it vibrating itself uh, otherwise it would just shake itself to pieces like the one on the little bastard does so we don't want that so it's bolted down solidly it's uh, it's surviving pretty well it's hard to tell all the rust but we've um we've changed some of these gears as well really what we found is we need to to kind of gear the whole thing down um you know it was hitting 50 miles an hour in the field which was great but um yeah for, for kind of smaller tighter technical tracks we need uh we need a little bit more kind of grunt low down and there's the big clutch so stock clutch a little bit flimsy this is built out of kind of like a four millimeter thick angle iron kind of chopped and and kind of welded together build that strong and it pays dividends 
And in there we have the tea drive uh, from Ron's beds. And it kind of hides in there and transmits the drive kind of from that plane to this plane. And really it's that simple. I'll put this down before you see too much. Now anyone who does project builds will tell you the project build never actually gets finished. Um, you know, it'll look complete, but there's always something that can be footed about with or tinkered with or just kind of modified. So we do expect that there, but for the most part, I believe this thing is kind of done right now. Um, which kind of brings me back to the, the fact that I like to have two projects on the go at any given time. I wonder what's underneath that sheet.